Hey guys, Karen from The Timeless Dog here with a little help from CJ who you'll see in a few minutes. Today we're going to be talking about cooperative care and why it is so important to do that with your dog. Your dog should have some say in what happens to their body. And what we're going to talk about today is brushing your dog. Every dog needs to be brushed regardless of breed. Some breeds more than others. So we should teach our dogs to be a part of that process instead of having it be something that they just kind of have to get through. Why not teach them to enjoy it? So that's what I'm going to show you today. What you're going to need is your furry friend, a brush, and some yummy treats. Let's get started. The first step in cooperative care is for the humans more than anything else you have to be comfortable and in the right state of mind to do this work. So get in your comfy clothes and then get down on the floor with your dog or work with them on a flat surface. You can do this on your bed or maybe on the sofa, but we want it to be a pretty flat surface. Ideally, your dog will be at about the height of your hips when they are laying down because that's going to be part of it. Clearly CJ is more interested in the treats than listening to me talk. Once you're comfortable and you're in the right state of mind, then what we want to do is we want to get our dog comfortable with the equipment that we are going to use. The equipment you're going to use is going to look different for each dog, depending on breed, their coat, many different factors. The brush I am using today with CJ is a Furminator. You do not have to use this brush. This is just what works best for us. So even though you're seeing me use this, think of the tool that you may be using. It's the same principle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just making sure CJ is comfortable with this tool. And how we do that is we just expose him to it. We let him check it out. If he looks at it, we yes and pay him with a super yummy treat. So we're pairing something our dog loves, super yummy treats, with something they may not be super thrilled with. We're building that positive association between the item, the brush, with some yummy treats. So if he just engages with it, yes. If he boops his nose, yes and pay. That's where we want to start. If your dog is a little bit fearful, you're not going to start to move the item towards them too quickly. You can just leave it on the floor and let them explore it at their own pace. Over time, you can move the item closer and closer until your dog is comfortable and willingly interacting with it. Then and only then is it time to actually take the brush to the dog. But before we can do that, we need to get our dog into the right position. Let me show you how you can do that. For this next part, what we're going to do is we're going to teach our dogs to comfortably lay on their side willingly. We want our dogs to lay on our side because, on their side, excuse me, because that is going to allow us to quickly and effectively brush the length of their body. In turn, if we teach them to willingly go onto their side, they will be more comfortable when we start to brush them. For this stage though, we are not going to even brush our dog. We're just teaching them to lay on their side. I have kind of a funny name for this cue. The cue is called do less. You can choose to use whatever cue works best for you and your dog. But I'm gonna scoot back just so you can see CJ and the way his body moves for this. My head's gonna be cut off, I do apologize, but you'll still be able to hear me as I talk you through this. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by getting your dog to lay down. You're gonna ask for a down. Once they lay down, you are going to pay attention to their back hips. They're going to shift to one side. So CJ's hips shifted to my left or his right. Because they shifted to my left, I'm going to take my treat to the right and roll him onto his side and then yes, and drop the treat when he lays flat. Now we've practiced 
practiced this quite a few times, so obviously he made that look pretty easy. It may not go that smoothly for you. So what you're going to do, can you stand? Stand up. Good boy, sit. Down. Is you can pay for small increments. Yes, good boy. So if you roll your dog to one side and he even shifts just a little bit, you can yes and pay. And then the next time, look for a little bit more of a roll onto the side. Yes, good job. Okay, I need you to stand up now. I'm gonna do that one more time for you. Down. Pay attention to the back hips here. Oh, <laughs> yes, good boy. He knows what we're working on. Can you sit up? down. Whichever side the hips go to, you bring the treat to the other side. So I'm going to wait for those hips to shift. They went to the right this time, so my treat's going to go to the left. Do less. Yes, good boy. I like to drop the treat on the ground itself because that reinforces the position I want him in. Once my dog is going into this position, what I can start doing is I can start petting him and paying him at the same time for being comfortable enough to be laying on his side while I touch him all over and just get him used to me petting him as he lays on his side. Because as we know, this is a pretty vulnerable position for our dog. Good job, good work. Once your dog is comfortable with this stage of things, then and only then can you add in the brush. Let me show you what I mean. I have my willing participant CJ here. I've got my super yummy treats. And now I'm going to add in my brush. So my dog is first and foremost comfortable with the sight of the brush. Then he becomes comfortable with laying on his side. And finally, what I'm going to do is now I'm gonna actually brush my dog. I'm gonna have a handful of super yummy treats. I'm going to brush my dog drop a treat. Brush my dog, drop a treat. If at any point in time he gets up, that's okay. That's where the cooperative care comes into play. If he goes, no thank you, I don't want to do this today by getting up, that's okay. We'll try again later. Or I can ask again, do less. Remember to give your dogs a chance to think. If he is really telling me, no, thank you, I don't want to be brushed, that's okay. It's important that you listen to your dog and allow them to be a willing participant in what you're doing with them. I hope this helps teach you how to get your dog to be a willing participant in the care that they are receiving. We will continue this series tackling some other things along the cooperative care line. If there is something that I, you would like me to show you how to get your dog to be a willing participant in, please feel free to leave a comment and I will be happy to make a video for that. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And as always, don't forget to tell your dog I said hi.